everybody. Um, if any of you don't know we are, we're Pat and Trev Spivey from church and we're just to tell you a little bit about ourselves, I think, and how God's impacted our lives. Uh, I came to this church in 1984. We've got three children, all grown up now, with children of their own. Um, and, the, and our children became Christians before us, and then Trev, and lastly me. And Trev will tell you all about that. When Trev became a Christian, it was such a witness to me. I saw such a change and I saw the love in him, the joy he got, and the love he got not only for us, because he did love us, but, but his love for everyone. And uh, it really made an impact on me. But, but I didn't really want to go to church. I didn't want to join him. And, and he didn't try to persuade me to, which, well, well like him, he naturally he would have done, but he didn't. He just <clears throat> let me see what God had done for him, really. But uh, th then this, when they started going to Hansworth Church, Claire came home and said that she wanted to get baptised. And uh, I tried to dissuade her because... I thought as they'd been christened as children that they wouldn't need to be baptised. But she was adamant. So when uh, when the Sunday came that she was going to, my mum and me went along with them to, uh, to see her be baptised. And Fiona got baptised as well that evening. And uh, I was amazed when I went in church and I saw all these people really enjoying worshipping and enjoying church. And uh, some of the first people I saw were Pete and Christine Smith, and I'd known them uh, years before. And uh, Pete Smith, who, who in the 60s was famous for his all-night parties, was here worshipping God. So I, I really was wondering what, what were happening. And uh, after the girls got baptised, uh, Steve Pierce was, was playing drums. And I think he saw me looking a bit mesmerised with everything going on and he left the drums and, and he came and uh, it, it told, gave me and my mum the gospel really and, and explained to us all what was happening. And uh, my mum said, I think you ought to be here with them. So after that, I went along at Sunday night to the uh, gospel services. And I did realise that these people had... Uh, had got something that I hadn't got, got something different. So I was curious about it. And uh, and after a few weeks, an appeal was made and I went forward. And I remember Frida came and prayed for me and spoke to me afterwards. And she said, you've made the decision with your head, but not with your heart, But but keep on praying and uh, and you you will it will drop into your heart and i thought it was a strange thing to say at the time but there's a scripture in low carried and it said seek and you will find and the door will be open to him will knock so i did i uh, i read and had a commentary and i bought books and I had books given me and uh, i went to bible studies uh, there was an old lady in the church called Mrs. Applewhite. She did one in her flat every week. I went there to church Bible studies. I attended all the church meetings. And sure enough, a few weeks later, uh, Jed preached. And and I, I felt as if God was having a one-to-one -one with me. And I really felt convicted and, uh, and realized what he'd done for me at the cross, what God had done for me and how much he loved me and asked him to forgive me of my sins and and start afresh. And uh, and I was so different after that. And I loved going to church and loved being part of the church family. Because Trevor and the kids were really pleased that I'd done done the same as them and they were, that we were all together. And uh, And funnily enough, now, we worship in, in the building where Trev, uh, that our first time he took me out, he took me to the plaza 
to a concert and uh, a different kind of music then though that we used to we used to enjoy from uh, what from what we get out in the building now but um, the but the people in the church really welcomed us in and there were families with kids the same age group as ours and they were so good all of everyone welcoming us and helping us when we were new Christians and I'm so grateful of that and for the people that did yeah. that and uh, and we stayed in this church obviously we have and the and one of the one of the bonuses of that I think is that kids that were the same age as our kids then obviously a lot older now and we've watched them and when when things are going good for them we rejoice with them when when we see that they need prayer we pray for them. they like our, like we do for our own family because they are part of our family now and some are, some younger families than us with little kids we've seen them grow up and it's the same for them and that is a bonus for us i think really feeling part part of the family and loving them like we do and we've done all sorts in church we've had so many blessings that really i couldn't even tell begin to tell you in a way um we've gone to christian camps we used to go to ibti every year and god's been so good and answered so many prayers and there's lots of prayers we're still waiting to be answered and I, and it always amazes me when i look back on answered prayers i think when I prayed, that's not the way I imagined and wanted you to answer it, Lord. But you've answered it in a different way. And he always knows the best way and what's best for us, doesn't he? And, uh, and for our family. And uh, so we can't, we'll always be prayers. We've, got, we've now got eight grandchildren as well. So praying for our own family, our church family and wider, the world in general. And it, and it needs a lot of prayer. And... Uh, and we're thankful for our church. We have been through tough times as well in life, like you do, and in church, in our church life as well. But God has been faithful and helped us through, and He's always there for that. And um, and now we're thankful. I I see these meetings online. I think I think they're, they're really good. These devotions and the Sunday meetings. We're so thankful for that. Obviously, I can't wait to be back in church, all worshipping together and being able to have a chat together and enjoy it. But I think it's marvellous and I think that God will use this. I've, what the enemy means for harm, God always turns around for good. And I believe that this time that we've had to have these meetings like this, God will use to glorify his name. Amen. And um, I'll let Trev talk to you now. <laughs> well done, Pat. Well, I started courting Pat on my 17th birthday. I, I wooed her with fish and chips. <laughs> we got married, I got married uh, with Pat when I was 21 in 1966. And uh, by in 1970, for four years, we had three kids in four years. Uh, and I worked in a heavy forge making crankshafts. There was a lot of short time and strikes at that time, which didn't do my peace of uh, mind any good. We'd have two or three good years, and then we'd have two or three bad years where I was only on two days and three days. And I was always worrying and angry at the moment's notice. And one night, Pat went, uh, she was uh, on the committee of this, the uh, community centre on our estate, and she just round the corner, she was at meeting, and, and I was with the kids, and they'd gone to bed, and. I must have been feeling a bit low and I said God if you're there show me because there's got to be more to life than this the week after he sent Mick Brown uh, to come and uh, he asked me if if my kids would go with him to Rotherham Church because he wanted his girls to start going to church and he knew he knew our kids had been to Sunday school since they were five or six and and they're now 13, 11 and 9. And so they said, and I asked them, and they said, yes, they'd go with him. And so they, off they went. And uh, they were friends at school as well. And so that's where they went. And after three weeks going, 
He went to a prayer meeting and Mick says, can they go to a prayer meeting? And we saw so said yes. And they came back full of Georgia Springs and, and said somebody spoken in tongues. And of course, we hadn't got a clue what tongues were. I thought it was a cult. So Mick were witnessing to me at the same time. They're doing a good job, really, you know. And uh, so I thought, I'm going to go and find out what it's all about. And then three weeks later, I got saved. And two weeks after that, I got baptised. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and when I got baptised, after I got baptised, and uh, I started to go into meetings and knowing more about God, I have never felt a peace like it in my life. And uh, it, were, it were, I needed it, to be honest with you. And Pat did as well. Mm -hmm. We moved to Hansworth Full Gospel Church. We made a decision, Michael and myself, to bring our kids as well, obviously, uh, to be near a home and to be part of a church where we could be help out in the community because we both felt that we we could do something to, uh, uh, to be a part of that and uh, after i got saved i started getting prayers answered and uh, job up job opportunities at work and more money and all that but from being becoming a christian in 83 to 89 when the forge actually shut down I noticed the enemy were having a go at me all the time trying to stop me when the management altered things round I always seemed to get a, a better deal out of it than anybody else a better job and stiff things like that and it caused a bit of animosity and I noticed the enemy were having a go but it didn't before when I was getting blessed and, and that so I had to be on my me, on me guard all the time when it was time to go down to the machine shop, we all had to wait our turn for whatever job came up in seniority. And uh, <laughs> I finished up on the best section in the machine shop. Oh, God, give me the best on the best section. And that didn't go down too well with these people that were trying to cause me trouble. And so they tried to get it off me, but the convener, who actually was a communist, sided with me. And I thought that was funny, me being a god man and him being a communist. But he sided with me and said, that job's yours, they will never take it off you. So that was brilliant for me to learn to know about life. And uh, that's when I started getting words of knowledge and sometimes prophetic and, and answer to prayer. And then in, in 1990, the firm took a bit of a dive with the jobs, the jobs finished and the crankshafts didn't want making anymore and so there were rumours going around that there'd be short time, people redundancy or even shut down and so there were a lot of worry uh, going off in the in the firm and so we were going to work one morning playing it with tapes then, I didn't have CDs them days and so I was listening to the choruses on the tape and then I turned it off, just so I got near firm and started praying. Lord, what's it what's going to happen to our church? We're all worried about our right. jobs. And uh, pardon? You said what's going to happen to our church. No, I'm sorry, <laughs> what's going to happen to our work? <laughs> uh, our, our place. And so the uh, God answered me. He spoke very clearly, he said, There's going to be a phone call. I thought, going to be a phone call. Brilliant. And then I thought, well, I don't know if it's a good phone call or a bad phone call. And I thought, well, it must be a good one, otherwise it would have told me. So uh, I get to work, this is Monday morning, and at dinner time we're all talking and we had like a little office to, that we all had as dinner in our section. And they were all, all saying, oh, I've got a new car and I, oh, I just bought a house six months ago. And they're all worried. And I said to them, stop worrying, it only takes a phone call. Of course, I got a bit of stick with that, like, and every time I was talking to anybody and going around the firm, I just said, stop worrying, it only takes a phone call. And every day they were shouting to me, we haven't had a phone call yet. And it was a bit of banter, you know, all through the week. And then on the Friday, over the tannoy, they said, everybody in the in the canteen uh, meeting, big meeting, till the afternoon turn and all that, like, so it were rammed, the, the canteen were rammed with people. And the first word they said, we've got some good news for you. We've had a phone call and we've got the European Alliance crank. And of course, I was laughing then and all my mates were looking at me and go, oh, right. And uh, it proved that God knows what he's talking about. You know, I, I believed him. And uh, 
we had that we had that crankshaft for six years permanent for six years and so her, uh, I had the best and I had the best job in the factory at that time I got a move upon the section and nobody else wanted it and I got the best job on the factory believe me and uh, but there were still people trying to stop me getting it anyway from 1985 to the year 2000 we went to RBTI with Pete and Christine what a fabulous time every year we went there it was like God's own place it was oh, fantastic what did Christine say were holy take ground your take your shoes off we're on holy ground and it felt like that and that were our main holiday every week every year two year two weeks to go to RBTI and we're learning more and more about God. And in 1996, I became an elder at the church. Pat was the treasurer for five or six years as well. And we've represented our church on mission trips, both ministering and being ministered to. Had a great time in America, Mexico and Canada. And, uh, and what, we've, what I've learned through all this, all the years, being with the Lord, is talk to him about your... your uh, your fears and your worries he will reach out to you never fails he will reach out to you he sent mick brown to me he used my kids as well and pat got saved too and in that time we've been at andworth we've been able to help out with lived sunday school preaching leading worship cleaning full bank and it's been a privilege it's been an absolute privilege and we're still going to carry on doing it as well and if I could say anything to anybody is keep praying for newcomers, prodigals, families and teenagers. Because that's who we're going to get sent in. And if we keep praying for them, God will keep sending them in. And that's my thing for you is keep praying. And it's been a pleasure to talk to you. God bless you.